G'day, welcome to the uh, second episode of On This Day in Australian History. Um, hopefully you like the first one, that's why you've come back. Uh, if so, thank you. Um, in the intro to the last episode, I um, mentioned that I'll be taking dates from the last couple of hundred years of Australian history. Now, obviously Australian history goes back much further than that, uh, 40, 50,000 years further up, obviously, with the Aboriginal people. Um, but that's not my story to tell. That's, um, there's only one way that that can be told properly, and that's the way it's been told for many thousands of years, face to face, around a campfire, and passing it on that way. So um, I won't be doing that, because out of respect for the uh, Aboriginal people. Uh, so moving on with that, um, on this day, today is the 11th of May, so uh, what, what's happened on the 11th of May? Uh, on the 11th of May, 1813, um, a group of blokes got together and they decided to cross a mountain. This is their story. So the first few years after the first fleet lobbed at 1788, uh, it was mainly spent trying to establish a colony, um, get a bit of farmland together and to try and provide their own food because they'd only bought limited supplies with them on the, uh, on the ships. The thoughts of exploring the white open spaces beyond the initial settlement kind of took a back seat to uh, fending off the starvation and disease and those pesky little natives who for some reason just didn't share England's vision for Australia. But eventually, through the efforts of Gordon Phillip and a few other notable arrivals, um, we'll probably do a bit more of them in later episodes, a toehold was gained around the harbour and more thought could be given to having a bit of a look around and see what the country beyond was actually all about. As it turned out, when they went west, they bumped into the Blue Mountains, which to English eyes looked all but impassable, with red lines plummeting into deep valleys and simply ending in sheer cliffs, all covered by dense vegetation. So for those uh, that aren't in Australia, the Blue Mountains are part of the Great Dividing Range which runs pretty much from the south down in uh, Victoria all the way up to uh, the north up around Cairns and a little bit further up. So it seemed that uh, they were more or less hemmed in on the eastern edges of the land. Um, but with subsequent convict ships rolling up over the years and the arrival of a few uh, free settlers, there began to be a bit of a strain on the available land and so they needed to do something find more land to expand the colony with. Many attempts were made to find a path through the Blue Mountains, but these attempts had all focused on following the rivers for whatever reason, I don't know. I would have thought that running around in the, in the valleys would sort of restrict your field of vision a bit and be, make it hard to sort of point out where you're going. All of the earlier attempts ended in failure. But a bloke named Gregory Blacksland arrived in Australia in 1806 and he eventually became a, quite a wealthy grazier. If he could find more grazing lands beyond the edges of the known settlement, he stood to make a really nice little packet. So he approached Governor Macquarie about funding an expedition to cross the mountains. Apparently Macquarie didn't have a particularly high opinion of Blacksland and thought he should concentrate on growing grain and meat to feed the colony rather than gallivanting around in the hills. But in the end, he was granted approval for the expedition. Uh, William Lawson came to Australia as a junior officer in the New South Wales Corps in 1800. And by the time of the expedition, he was a landholder and a magistrate, and crucially, he had surveying experience, which I would imagine would be quite handy when you're about to head off into the unknown. The other main player was William Wentworth, who was the son of a convict mother and an Irish father, and was the first Australian-born explorer. So Lawson, Blacksland and Wentworth departed South Creek in Sydney Cove on the 11th of May, 1813, with four assistants, five dogs and four horses. Rather than attempting the by now time-honored method of following the rivers, they were smart and they decided to follow the ridge lines, which to my inexperienced mind seems a much better option. From the ridges they were able to see off into the distance and make a much better decision on where they wanted to go. So these blokes took a much more methodical approach to the crossing. They followed the ridge lines as I mentioned before and their basic plan of attack was the three explorers and two of their servants would force on out ahead each day, find a path through the bush. Later in the day they'd turn around, they'd come back along that path, widening it and clearing it to allow the remainder of the camp and the horses and all the equipment to be brought forward to the point where they turn around. They'd set up camp and then go and do the exact same thing the next morning. 21 days later they reached the peak of Mount Blacksland and off into the distance they could see the untapped plains of New South Wales in the area that now surrounds the town of Lithgow. It's always had me buggered, you know. When you're going through history you always find people seem to bump into things that carry the same surname. That's got me knackered, but anyway. What? All right, let's just uh, move on, shall we? Lawson said that the land they saw was the best watered country of any I've ever seen in the colony. 
You'd think that with such a pioneering, never say die beginning, New South Wales would be able to field a decent state of origin team. But it seems not, which is a good thing for this Queenslander. But uh, I suppose that's a topic for another day, isn't it? So anyway, on this day, 11th of May 1813, Blackson, Lawson and Wentworth embarked on a bit of a stroll and ended up opening up the entire colony of New South Wales. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to be advised when uh, new episodes are posted, just click on the subscribe button that's down there somewhere. Uh, if you want to find out what I'm up to, go to my website, warwickoneal.com. Uh, if you want to check out my blog site, it's uh, notyouraverageidiot.net, where I blog on all sorts of things from four-wheel driving, single parenting, whatever comes into my head. So, uh, hope to hear from you soon, and uh, cheers. See ya.